to Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School BBC School Report 2013. Recent reports have shown that schools don't offer enough physical education to pupils. Obesity is becoming a big thing in Britain. Can we stop it with more exercise? We interviewed some people that want to encourage more sport. <laughs> other subjects. So what do the head teachers think about this? We left Emma to find out more. So a recent report recommended that like all school students should do an hour of sport a day. Do you think this is very practical? It's a great idea. <clears throat> However, um, it's not particularly practical, maybe not. Um, I think it's important that sport is high on the agenda in every school and it's important that people do do exercise and follow a healthy lifestyle and school has a very important part to play in that and also with a lot of um, you know the legacy after the Olympics it's important that we build on what went on in the Olympic Games we do an awful lot of sport with our primary school students an awful lot and you as students have a lot of opportunity to join clubs do a lot of house events um, as well as doing your curriculum PE so I think what's important is that you still do the curriculum PE and you do not lose that across the UK, iPads and tablets are being used, but are they helping? Are they replacing the old methods? Can students take what they have done and use it without tablet? Will it affect their work? So, would the interruption of iPads affect your job, and if so, why? Would it affect my job? Um, I don't think it would affect my job. I think it would have maybe affect the school because we'd have more uh, technology in school, things like security, and um, obviously damage, things like that, but actually I think it would make, I suppose, learning a bit more exciting. I like my iPad, and uh, so yeah, I think I'd probably see more people who could tell me how to use mine. Will you know what the quantity of iPads has a problem with it, or it like get broken? Um, I'd probably panic. Um, I don't know, probably, again, we've got some great guys here um, as part of the IT stuff, so again, I, if it was a major issue that I couldn't deal with, I'm sure. It would fail me out. They are worth the cost of what the iPads are worth and what? Um, well, the, the iPad cost itself comes from a range of things because you've got the cost of the actual hardware and the applications. Now, obviously, that's a big upfront cost, but at the same time, uh, it's going to have a long term benefit. So you, it's, you can't really look at the cost just as it, as it is by itself. Well, tablet, affect your lessons at school online? Yes, because we'd interact more with each other and teachers. Well so many people wanting such valuable equipment. Students who are able to access one of these iPads would more than likely take any time to use them. Maybe for homework if students actually wanted to complete homework tasks using an iPad rather than being made to, they would probably do a better job on it and therefore get higher levels or scores than they otherwise would do. teachers alike are in favour of this introduction. Overall it will completely change schools, mostly for better. Liam, Josh, Oliver and Matt reporting for BBC Sport Report. I'm Phoebe and I'm Holly and we're reporting on Ashbourne's Royal Shrovetide Football. Royal Shrovetide Football is a well-known game in the Derbyshire area. Shrovetide is a unique version of football, however it doesn't involve kicking the ball. 
Terrified, it's where hundreds of Ashburnians play, including players that have trained for weeks preparing for the massive game. When shops are boarded up and schools are closed, the game is ready to begin. This painting is situated in Parkside Junior School, Ashbourne. It shows a victorious team parading back through Ashbourne in 2003. Now we have an interview with Terry. So you're the maker of the balls then? Yes, I make the balls. Um, I'm apprenticed to a chap called John Harrison. Um, and we usually make we usually make one each a year. If, but if there's more scored, then we, have to, we obviously have to make more. Uh, what are they made out of? Uh, the outside is leather, obviously from from a cow. Um, it's made of th three three panels of leather, two round ones, and then a big strip round the middle. Big strip, and then it's filled with cork, which is so on the table here. Look. It's, it's round with that cork shavings. So, sir, what's your opinion on Shrove Tide? Um, I'm a massive Shrove Tide fan because I'm born in Ashbourne, born and bred in Ashbourne. It's always something I've done, so I've always played it, and yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Are you an upward or a downward? I'm an upward. Do you local rugby players? Quite a few, yeah. Um, those that are sort of local to Ashbourne all sort of play, yeah. Um, I want to see that come from outside, see what we're doing and like the idea of enjoying it, yeah. Do you go to Shrewsbury? Yeah. What's your opinion to Shrewsbury? Um, it brings a whole community together and it's a really fun day out. Yeah, I just like it. It's fun to go to and have a couple of days away from everything. This is the Royal Shrewsbury Football Monument. It was erected in 2008 by Gordon Dawson in 1979. It was the gift to the town. Does Shrove Tide affect your business? Yes, very much so. We have to, um, we have to rely on Shrove Tide in a way because it, it brings in a lot of readers. People watch the game and then they want to buy the paper and see the pictures and read the stories from it. So it's very much so. I love Shrove Tide. It's, it's very hard work for us, but I, I really enjoy watching it. I enjoy. Um, Pulling in all the stories and seeing the pictures come through from the photographers, and, and it's a very exciting two days. The year 2000 saw the start of a new millennium, which means that people born in that year are 13 this year. We want to know how those people feel about being 13 in 2013, and will that have an effect on their lives? I am 13. I am 13. I am 13. I'm 13. The year 2000 saw the start of a new millennium. With it came Millennium Babies. Now these babies are turning 13. What are their opinions on this? Does being 13 this year make any difference at all? Um, it might do a bit, but to be honest with you, there's not really that much difference whether you're born in the Millennium, 2001, 1999, it doesn't really make a difference. Does being 13 this year make any difference at all? Not really. Well, it's not 1999, 2000, there's no real difference in age, so it's the same. But like, it's a difference to when our parents were about because they didn't have the stuff we have, like this camera, for example. What are your hopes and dreams for the future? Still no idea. Did having a child in the millennium year make any difference? No, not really. Everybody plays computer games these days, which is something that weren't about when I was young. Does it make a difference this year? Not really, apart from the normal um, teenage problems as, as people become teenagers. I'm sure on camera I don't need to describe what uh, what those problems are, but just typical teenage problems, I think. I am 13. I'm reporting on the Brit Awards 2013. We're going to look at the highlights, big winners, and maybe even some quotes from the biggest stars. We're also going to look at some of the things you didn't know about the Brits, but will be able to wow your friends with your musical knowledge. On the 20th of February, the Brit Awards took place in the O2 Arena. It featured many famous bands and singers winning various awards and singing their songs live. Emily Sando and Ben Howard won most awards that night, taking home two Brit Awards each. Ben Howard won British Breakthrough Act and the Best British Male Solo Artist. Emily Sando won British Female Solo Artist 
and the big, biggest prize of the night, best album called Our Version of Events. Emily's biggest rival was Adele, who won the best British single, Skyfall, which featured in the new James Bond film, Skyfall. One Direction went global this year and won Brits global success for international sales in 2012, as well as seeing their comic relief single live, one way or another. Lots of other awards were given that night, as well as a live performance from other people like Taylor Swift, who sang I Knew You Were Trouble. She had a very dramatic costume change as she started in an old-fashioned white wedding dress, and then she changed into a black jumpsuit. Also, Robbie Williams and Justin Timberlake performed their hit songs live. Each year, Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School put on a fabulous performance open to students and members of the public. This year, the school will be performing The Wizard of Oz. The show will be held from the 20th to the 23rd of March. Follow us down the Yellow Brick Road to find out more. Here's Millie. There's only one day to go until the Wizard of Oz performance. Excited members of staff and students will be finishing touches on songs, scripts and dance. Also, members from the technology department are putting final touches on the prop and the sets. They've clearly all put a lot of hard work and effort into it. Yes, okay, brilliant. Now, earlier today we interviewed some of the main cast. Here they are now. We are here with Miss Wesley making Wizard of Oz costumes. How many years have you been making the costumes for? I think it's about nine, since 2004. Do you enjoy making the costumes, or is it just something you've been asked to do? I do enjoy doing it, but it's quite difficult to fit it in because I have to teach as well. How do you feel to have the main part in the play? Well, it's quite nerve-wracking because I've got to take a lot of responsibility, but I've really enjoyed the experience. I've made a lot of new friends, and it's just a great thing to be a part of, just everyone chipping in. And it's, it's been a lot of effort, but it's definitely been worth it. The HS2, a new high-speed rail line linking Manchester and Leeds to Birmingham and London. In this report, we have dug deeper into what's going on. We'll find out what you, the public, think, what the Secretary of State for Transport thinks, and what the effect will think of this new train service. Some members of the public are against this proposal, as they think that the money could be spent elsewhere, that they don't need a new high-speed rail service, and it's unfair that they have to pay for something they don't want through taxes. Hello, I'm Lara. And I'm Ewan. And we're interviewing the Secretary of State for Transport, Patrick Blackburn. Um, the new East Midlands station in Twitter has been in local news recently. Do you have a message for the people whose homes currently lie in the proposed route? Yes, we can't do any big major infrastructure problems without actually somewhere doing, saying to some people, we're going to have to knock your house down or we're going to have to compensate you for the inconvenience that you're going to go through. But we will have a compensation scheme for those houses we have to consult to repurchase. Uh, that we will consult on and uh, make announcements on shortly. So I understand that concern. But one of the things governments have to do is look at what is best for the long term future of the country. And I believe HS2 is. So, after interviewing Mr. McLaughlin, we decided to speak to Mr. Atkins, whose golf club currently lies on the proposed route for the HS2 line, and see what he had to say. So let's have a recap. We've spoken to Patrick McLaughlin, MP, and Mr. Atkins, who's the affected. So it's only fair to interview the public to see what they think. I think that it would be, it is, and will be a good investment in the transport network for the country. Okay. Yes, I can see that I will use the HS2. Thank you for watching. This has been Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School BBC School Report 2013.